who like to testify, but I'm one of those people, and 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 I do it through my music. Okay, that's what's up, man. So let's let's uh, we we giving the people. Uh, I want to keep you all locked into the show, man. We talking it up, chopping it up with uh, Million. Um, we ain't talking about where he's at now as far as his move, but I'm gonna go back to uh, taking back to young Million, man. Did you, did you grow up in the church, or is this just you just uh, got re- got uh, got to know Christ as you got older? Or tell me about uh, young Million and how you got to where you at. Well, um, I my, my mom actually got saved right either right when I was born or right a little before she was uh, uh, pregnant with me. So the church thing was kind of new uh, for her. And so as a kid, I really didn't have no choice. I had to be a part of that growing yeah. transition. So uh, uh, it was, a, you know, so I grew up forced to go to church. And, you know, I didn't have really no <laughs> option. And so I figured yeah. since I was there, I might as well have a good time since I have, you know, I really didn't have an option. So, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I grew up in the church, but I really wasn't, really wasn't walking it out. Um, uh-huh. But, you know, I'm, I'm always, I was a very, I'm all, I am a very curious person. I've always been a very curious person. And so when, they, you know, they told me about this thing called faith. And, um, uh-huh. and so, you know, I, I read the scriptures and I was very intelligent, uh, for my age when I was younger, um, so I understood <coughs> what most people didn't understand, and so I read about faith and I, I, I um, listened to the sermons of my church, and I, I, you know, was a part of my youth ministry. And you know, one day I just I just decided just to walk it out and on something mm-hmm. small. You know, people were talking about you know I didn't know what dick cancellation was. You know, uh-huh. you know, bills being paid. I didn't have no bills. You know, my, my uh-huh. struggle was was waking up every morning and getting to school on time. That was my yeah. only struggle. So, yeah. you know, I knew that there was this bike that I really, really wanted. And uh, so I just began to pray about it. And I began to, to tell, uh, you know, just talk to the Lord about it. And I posted up a picture and I would lay hands on a picture every day. And, you know, I wouldn't tell anybody. It would be right under under my pillow. And um, one day, uh, after, it took a while, you know, you know, of course, it, with anything in faith, it's not anything. A lot of people want that microwave faith. But that's another sermon mm-hmm. for another time. But um, it took a while, and um, you know, one day I came home, and that bike that I had prayed God for, I didn't tell anybody about that I really wanted, was in my bedroom. The exact oh, wow. same bike, the exact same color. And I'm in I'm in elementary school at this time. Yeah. And, you know, and so I would ride my bike around, and you know, people were like, oh, that's a nice bike. Well, how did you get it? And I was just like, thanks. And, you know, these little kids, are, you know, they didn't know anything yeah. about what I was talking about, but I knew what I was talking about. And so yeah. from then on, you know, I just kind of walked my life to keep the top. And it was, a, you know, it was ups, it was downs, it was a learning process nevertheless. But I'm glad to say here at 27, everything that I went through has been a testimony for me, is a testimony for me, and it has uh, grew me into the, the Christian that I am today. You know, I'm able to say, uh, this September, I'll be getting married. I'm 27 years old. And I was a virgin. I am a virgin. And uh-huh. um, my wife is a virgin also. And, you know, uh-huh. they said it couldn't be done. And, you know, we, we met on, on the random randomest of, of, of instances. And, you know, we're uh-huh. together today. And, you know, my, I wouldn't trade my walk with Christ for anything in the world. And uh, I just, I love God. And, you know, He loves me. And, you know, I, 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 I learn more about Him all the time and, and, and I learned more about myself even in that process and so I'm thankful and you know I went from a young kid who just really liked music and was dancing and praise and worship service to one day decide to walk out on my faith to being able to tell the world about this, this faith and this relationship that I have with you oh that's what's up man congratulations on the marriage man uh, thank you uh, man it's, it's going to be an amazing journey for you man I'm, I'm, uh, I like to see when young people come together and uh and get it going on with especially if they got God in the middle everything works out for the for the yeah. greater good so yeah. so real quick uh talk to the young person real quick uh who's out there struggling um with their sexuality or they feeling embarrassed because they're virgin and walking through life um with that and don't know how to uh maintain uh through life um because you said you you and your wife are virgins and y'all coming together as a union so uh talk to the young people real quick and let them know how basically really man everybody wouldn't know how you did it Man, it wasn't easy. I tell you that much. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good-looking young fella, so it was not the easiest, easiest of ways. And, and you know, especially a guy with a slick mouth. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rapper, so you know, rappers got a slick mouth. 
you know. <laughs> but for yeah. me, you, you just you just really got to stand on that word. I have a song that's coming out on my album. Uh, it's called uh, Kicking It. And it, uh, it's actually on my last album. This one is the remix, but it talks about, you know, kind of a confession. It says, girl, you mighty fine. You weigh more than a dime. But please understand the girl, I don't want to kick it like that. And so, yeah. you know, we have T-shirts and, you know, paraphernalia of all that stuff. But I really just kind of focused on the word. And I, I looked at the cost of what could happen and where mm-hmm. my ministry was and what God's plan for me and was that aligned with God's plan for me. And as I said, it wasn't easy, but I had to realize that, you know, it's just at the end of the, at the end, it, it's just not worth it. It's mm-hmm. not worth it. It's, it, it you know, I, I, God, God has a plan for me. And he has a plan for what he wants for my life. And, you know, the Bible says that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. And, you know, pretty much, I mean, we're supposed to do what the word says to do. And it wouldn't be a sacrifice if it was easy. And, yes, sir. you know, you know, we get caught up in the moment. As young people, we get caught up in that particular moment. And then we don't think about the consequences until after, until it's later. But if you mm. just take take 20 seconds and think about the outcome, you realize it's not what it's cracked up to be. You know, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and it, it, it really isn't. And, you know, uh-huh. I just kind of constantly have that on my mind. And, you know, I, I put myself in some really bad predicaments in some bad situations, but God's great covered me throughout it. You know, I didn't uh-huh. have that, that, you know, you know, David, I, I believe it wasn't about, but had that run spirit, that run, yeah. just run, yeah. sleep. I didn't have that yeah. at all. I yeah. didn't have that at all. I had to, to freeze, stay right there, and try to walk yourself out and talk yourself out of the situation. So, you know, but... The only thing that you can do, the only thing that you can depend on is the Word of God. And understand, and if, you know, if I can tell you anything, I would tell you that self-effort will not make it happen. You yourself are not strong enough to make it happen. You have to wholly and completely depend on the grace of God for your life. And you have to depend on the power of God that's operating in your life. Because if you try to do it on willpower, you will fail every time. You'll fail every time. So depend yes, on that sir. grace. Depend on that, that that love of God. Know how much God loves you. Realize all that he's done for you. And take that 30 seconds and just think about it. And you, I promise you, every time you'll, you'll be like, you know what? We can kick it. Uh, but I don't want to kick it like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good, man. Good, man. We, we sitting at the end of Red Hour. We got Million on the line, man. We chopping it up, man. Um, so I was shocked to know. You know, I'm thinking uh, when I'm setting up this interview with Million that I'm talking to a guy down in Atlanta. Come to find out he's in California. So uh, what's, what prompted the move, man? Why are you in California, Doc? Man, it was God, man. It was all God. I met a young lady on a boat who's now my fiance. And she is the, uh, her dad is the assistant pastor of a church out here. And it was just pretty much God. I kept having to come out here for events and shows. And it was prophesied to me when she was my girlfriend that I would be moving out here. And I never wanted to leave Atlanta. It was never in my car, never something I wanted to do. But God had a bigger plan for me. And I'm glad that I did make that move. My ministry increased, you know, over two, three hundred percent since I made that that transition. And, you know, and God has just been 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 blowing it up since then. And that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of the story. And here I am set up shop. Uh-huh. Culture, the uh, West Coast location. Okay, okay. So let let me ask you this because uh, I'm from Cali, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. What's the difference from um, California church to from Atlanta church? Um, from the churches that I've been to, uh, uh, because I have a home church here, which is uh, New Life Christian Center, and then you know traveling a lot. Um, I would say the the praise and praise works is a lot more free. I'm really like a uh, um, hill song kind of, you know, uh, CCM kind of uh, praiser, if you will. Uh, and that's been really the biggest difference because it's, it's not so much of that out there that is prevalent here. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the ministries, you know, are you know, the word is the word. And I've always been one to find, you know, the Lord has put me in places where there's effective ministry. And I'm really a, a, a learned kind of guy. I'm not really into the charismatic movement as such. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't trip on it. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not a, a basher or anything like that. But just yeah. for me, you know, I just, 
I just uh, really, uh, really like to get that word. Like, give me that, give me that, that word. Don't give okay. me that other stuff. Give me that word. And so I've been blessed to be able to find ministers who do just that. And um, and I've been placed in a position now to, to where I, I actually minister on the on the end of the month, uh, of, in the last Sunday of every month. And so I'm able to actually minister now. And uh, uh, But the, the biggest difference, what I would have to say, is the praise and worship aspect. But outside of that, everything's okay. good. Okay. So you do, um, are you... Um, active in your youth ministry or do you just do uh, adult ministry young teens what, do, what exactly do you do as far as ministry what uh, well my heart is for the youth so of course I'm active in, in uh, our youth ministry and uh, as I said I preach uh, at our youth service the last Sunday of every month and I'm still a member of my church World Changes Church International in Atlanta Georgia and I am a mm-hmm. member of uh, Big Student Ministries which is the youth ministry there in our church so anytime mm-hmm. I come home, I'm also, uh, you know, actively participating in what's going on in youth ministry. And, um, you know, that's just my life. I, you know, I grew up there. And, you know, that's where I serve. That's where I send my tithes and offering. That's where I keep my word. And, um, you know, the, so I, I, but I remember, and I've said this before, uh, but I remember when my mission, like my biggest dream was just to minister on stage at my youth ministry. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Now, um, now my youth ministry is really the world uh, it's not just one church it's not just one building it's every place that I'm invited to every country every every young adult thing every overnight every lock-in every concert every uh, uh, whatever it is that's my opportunity to minister to the youth so that's my you know youth ministry aspect and I'm able to do that so you know that that's really my heart to be able to minister and be effective in that aspect and that's what you know I'm able to do now all across the world not only at World Changes in Atlanta not only at New Life Christian Center in Sacramento but wherever I go the Bahamas the Amsterdam the Chicago Florida wherever that's my youth ministry okay that's what's up man okay so the homie uh, Yonder the King big shout out to Yonder the King of Seattle man gave me this idea of a fun fact so I'm going to hit you with some quick fun facts, and then we're going to get back to the business, man. You ready to close out the show? Are right, you ready? All right. All right. All right. Favorite, what's your favorite food? Shrimp fettuccine alfredo. All right. What's your favorite candy? Favorite candy? Uh, payday. Payday. <laughs> what's your favorite place to eat? Man, give me two. Give me one in Atlanta and one in California. All right. In Atlanta, my favorite place to eat would be... Um, Big Daddy Barbecue on Old National Highway. Okay. In California, uh, my favorite place to eat would be, uh, let's see, um, ah, uh, oh man, what's the name of this restaurant? Uh, Treasure Dragon in Sacramento. Okay, okay. Uh, give me a, like a, a dream vacation. Oh, okay. Give me a uh, dream vacation. Dream, dream vacation? Yeah. Um, I, when I went to Turks and Caicos. Okay, okay. And then, last but not least, give me your favorite sports team from basketball, baseball, football, hockey. Well, I'm actually just getting into sports because my life is really dedicated to music. But so I have to okay. say, uh, I have to say right now, um, it's Miami. Okay, okay. The, the Heat. Yes. Okay, welcome to the club, man. I'm a Heat fan as well, so you know we're, okay. we're, we're, we're on the same page as far as that. Yes, yes, All right, yes. All right here you go. A little fun fact. You can homie me million, man. Just getting a little impromptu uh, combo with her so you know um, what to, if you're on tour, if you come to a city you never you, you might know to drop him a couple paydays um, in the back room just so you have to pay some much on why before you're ready. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Million, man. Um, well, let's get to the pictures and before we get ready to get out of here. Uh, first, let them know where they can catch you at as far as upcoming tours or events you got going on or anything you want them to know as far as the, um, the label goes, like who's uh, dropping the song, single, what you got going on as far as that. Um, you can visit my website, livemillionic.com, and it has all of, all of everything, all of the things you mentioned there, but also my Facebook Everything is slash million. So my Facebook is facebook.com slash million. My Instagram is uh, Instagram.com slash 
I am Million. My Twitter is I am Million. 